your jungle. Audio jungle. message to in Korea. Let's read the Bible verse together. Yes, when the fire is going on, right? Upward. The man is born to trouble. Wow. Is it cheering you up or you say that, ah, really? <laughs> what do you think about this? Well, God is saying in different way in Ecclesiastes. Can we read it one more time? And I said in my heart to seek and search out for wisdom, concerning all that is done under heaven. This word is something that has been given to the sons of men, by which they will be sacrificed. Yes. The life is not easy. Every day, we have a problem. Especially last one year, I feel kind of very tired because of business also, with my exercise also. Is there any people here who doesn't have a problem? <laughs> Life is a lot tough, right? Yes, even the children has a problem. I know that. I know, I think Bill knows this writer, The Road Less Trouble. The, the book name is Road Less Trouble, the road less trouble. Meaning to say we still have to wait to go more. This book was written 1978 by Scott Peck. The cover has been changed and Scott Peck looks like this person. And he's a psychiatrist, psychiatrist, the one who yeah, the handle for the mental. And the first page of this book says like this. Do you know this writer, right? It was a bestseller in New York Times for many years. And that is a very well known. So if you have a time, please buy this book and try to read it. The first page says like this. Life is a series of problem and suffering, isn't it? When we were born, we already started with many sufferings. When you go to elementary school, already many, every day we have a problem, we have a test. Then again, when you get adult, it seems that you need to carry for your family. Every morning you should cook. Your burden, is, it seems like, never will stop. Not only that, we have a problem with financially. We have a problem with our children. And our life never stops, and we keep on having the problem. I agree with him because his thinking is the same thinking what the Bible says. What the Bible says a while ago, we born to trouble. We born to trouble. And he says that this way, life is like a stormy sea with full of pain. When we leave this earth, which is full of the sin, it's like a crazy sea. That is a reason why. In the ocean, we need a savior. We think my life must have no problem, and we think that's normal. So I think if I have a problem, that's not normal. But this is an illusion of life, which we never will get. What kind of what is an illusion? 
that no problem. I have a life has no problem. That is an illusion. That we never get it in our life. The Bible says that again. Yet man is torn, born to trouble. God says that we born to trouble. But if we are thinking no problem is normal, something is wrong. So when difficult time comes to us, while we have peaceful life, we complain about why this is happening to me. In other words, we cannot accept our life designed to have a trouble. So what is normal? We have a trouble is normal. We don't have a trouble is normal, according to Bible. We have a trouble, this is normal. And God actually gave us the burdensome so that we can exercise those. Because of what people want is peace and safety, security. When pain and illness come to their life or our life, we think as if it was something we shouldn't have, something that shouldn't happen to me, and we struggle to get out of that suffering. Well, we can have a peaceful life only in heaven. But we never can have a peaceful life in this earth. This is what the Bible says. But our life in the world cannot live without the problem. What problem do you have, Bill? <laughs> you don't have a problem, or yeah, we have a problem, but we don't tell the problem to others even, right? <laughs> That's the problem too, yeah. It is a shy, sometimes I cannot share my problem. But to have problem in our life is a truth. If we understand this truth and accept it, we will have changes in our life. What is normal? Have a problem is normal or we don't have a problem is normal? Okay? Problem, having problem is normal life. So when we understand this too, what Bible says to us, first, we know life always carry problem. When we have a problem, we can accept, oh, okay, problem come. Do you understand? But if I don't accept the life, my life should not have a problem. And if I always think that way, when problem comes, I cannot accept it. Why? I should not have the problem. But our life designed to have a problem and suffering. Everybody dies. That's already suffering. When someone dies, all the family member effects and they suffer a lot with the pain. Why? Okay? Because it was designed for that. Second, if we accept the truth that we must have a problem, we're not going to complain and suffering about the problem. While solving those problems, we can grow. We become stronger every moment. When I started a business, one million peso was a very, very big money for me. That time, I was afraid and shaken when I handled that money. But when there is a suffering, 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 one million is not making me a problem anymore. I see that, why? I get stronger, stronger, stronger. To decide our life to success or not is how we handle our problem in us. If we can find the way to solve them or not, we'll decide let us have a successful life or not. Some cannot find a way to solve the problem and they show sight or they hang, hang themselves. So find a way why we have a problem 
and find a way how to solve the problem is quite important. When we forget that, we are in trouble. Let's read the Bible here. Paul wrote a 14 Bible, 14 letters. Among 14 letters, 13, 13, 1, 3, 13, the letter, he always greet the church member brethren with this word, grace to you and peace from God and Father and our Lord Jesus. We need to think about this little with their vision. Well, some churches like Corinthians, Ephesians, or some other Galatians, when they receive the letter from the Paul, maybe one person will say to the church member, you know what? Come, come. I have a letter from the Paul. Let's read it together. And people may be same as like today, tonight, they will gather into the bigger house like us. And they are listening carefully what the Paul is saying about. Because their life is so weary, tired. And when they're facing too much problems, they know that their spiritual eagerness cannot be filled in the world. So they try to be comforted by the words of God. And when they gathered, maybe this is the sin. So when we gather like this in the houses, and when we start to have a Bible study or listening the words of God, early church, that hotness will come back to us. Okay. The people here, they need grace and peace more than any people. You know why? Because the persecution of the Satan upon them was so strong in this time. The Satan tried to put down the fire of Holy Spirit and the Satan tried to kill all the Christians, maybe some of their father, mother, or their children died because they believe the Jesus. Or some of them, their parents might be standby to go to Colosseum following day. The people killed everywhere. What they want is the peace. So when Paul is a saying, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ maybe from here many places they are crying and they are their tears will be drops why this is what they want and when they listen this message maybe <coughs> They will understand the heart of God who wants to give us the peace and the grace in our life. This is not just a practical saying that happy Sabbath for them. This is the message for them touching their heart. What about for us now? Because we have, we are in peace. We cannot accept these words as much they accept in the time of trouble. These people they need answer why they are suffering. And if Paul answer this way, let's say, 
If you believe in Jesus, you will not have any problem. Do you think this answer can be helped them? No. Why? Because they are already in trouble, problem, and they are already in trouble. Some church are teaching to the people, you believe God and you will be blessed, you, your problem will be no more. No. The Bible never says that way. Instead, Paul answer this way. <clears throat> Paul answer like this. Can you read it? Yes, and all who desire to live worthy in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Yes. Paul is saying that. Do you think this word will be comfort to them or this word will be hurting them more? I'm sure. This message gave them the comfort. Why? Because they are in suffering and they can imagine themselves, I am in Christ now. That's why I am suffering. So they could have the confidence when they have a persecution and the suffering in their life. But when we say about these words, this time, you live godly so that you will have a persecution. No one will like it. Isn't it? Even myself, I don't like persecution. I don't like problem. But when we accept that, our life design and we born to solve the problem, then we will not worry about but we will be happy, especially when we have persecution. So that is the reason why the, even Peter is the same this way. Can you read it? This is the some people might think that I want to escape from this persecution. But Peter is saying, no, you cannot escape anywhere because everywhere, all the brethren now, they are under persecution. So those people who want to live godly, they have no exemption because everybody is suffered because Satan is there. Well, when they have this kind of persecution, where they can run away? They run away under the ground. Why? Because they cannot live anymore on this earth. The Satan is torturing them, and Satan is keep on killing them. So what they did, they go under the ground. And actually, in Revelation, there is a prophecy about that. Can you read it? So the serpent has been water out of his mouth like a flood after the moon, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth held the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spit out of his mouth. Yes. The water is a, the war could be the water. Problem, tribulation is water. The woman is a church, as you know. Earth helped the woman and it opened, so the tribulation will not swallow them all. So they come into the catacomb. This morning I spoke about the catacomb. As your catacomb is the place where they place the dead body. So when they put the dead body and actually they put something close it, but in later days, they take out all the stone because they try to look for the jewels. And they take it, so it was open now this time. And I was able to visit the place last year, 2013, in Turkey. Only the Christian allowed to live is in Katakum. The place is like this. And Roman soldiers, even they try to come in and try to find out the Christian, they have some safety stone, 
Okay, if somebody come and that this stone is rolled that way and they block the way, so the Roman soldier cannot come in to the catacomb. Do you think they have a fresh air there? Do you think they have a nice food? Do you think they are in good place for the water? Before that, the place where they can worship God in freedom was only this place. So this is the place where they worship. They gather together and they worship. Which place will be better, this place or this place? <laughs> But my question, are we eager to worship God? As much they eager to worship God? Or we just to worship practically because this is the Sabbath day? Or then, this message from the Pope made comfort to them. Can you read it together? For them, only comforting them is the message that Jesus will come back. When Jesus comes, we will get freedom. So to the Thessalonian people, who is saying that you comfort each other with the message that Jesus will come again? Why? Because in this land, we don't have any comfort. Because they are living under the ground. If a Paul is saying to the Corinthian people this way, can you read it? Yes. It says that you are dying as a dying, and behold, we live as we chasten and yet not killed. Supposed to be, Katakum is a place for the dead people, but we still live. So when they listen this message, the people in the Kataku, they will be happy or not happy? They happy. Actually, if you don't trust the Jesus, your life is designed for suffering. But when we say that we will believe in Jesus, we will have more suffering, we call that persecution. This is not only Paul says, even Jesus said this way. Can you read it? Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever wishes to save his life will save it. Yes. Even Jesus said, We must carry the cross every day, every day. When I choose to believe in God, the life was not easy. There was a deeper happiness, but I cannot say it was always happy because I feel suffering too. So if I say that I'm always happy, maybe that is a very big lie. But when I say that I still suffer, Maybe that is the right answer, and I'm sure you have your life will not be beautiful like always you wish. Even Peter, Peter said this way, like a Jesus was suffer as the example we follow. So we Christian design to follow Jesus with the suffering. So one biggest issue in the New Testament is like this. The trial of life and suffering. 
The people always question like this. If God exists, why do these trials and suffering come to us? How should we deal with these trials and suffering? So my message today is just to be God. How we are going to deal with the problem. Well, there is no people who like the suffering. The Piganism teaches this way, when you do something good to God, God will do good to you. But if you don't follow Him, He will destroy you. But the Christian, the true Bible doesn't say that way. The Bible says this way. Even you don't do good, God gives still the blessing. But if you try to follow Jesus, you will suffer more. This is the truth. I had a really big stress. My hair here lose many hair because of the stress. Even I said I believe in God, I want to cast out all my problem onto Him. Still as a human being, I have a problem and I have a stress. To you, God is God who help first or He is waiting until you are fully in trouble. God is God helping ahead of time? <laughs> or God is not helping until when you are really in trouble? What is your answer? What is your experience? Huh? Number one or number two? Okay, number one. God is helping ahead of time? No, God is helping when we are really in trouble. Yes, actually, number two is more biblical. I tell you why. When Israel people come out from the Egypt, they're between Mikdol, Mikdol big mountain, and in front of the Red Sea. The Egyptian soldier is following them. When they see, they are afraid and they cry out to the Lord. If I am the God, I am the God, when my many children, like two million children, is afraid, before they are afraid, I open the Red Sea and I let them pass. But God is not doing that. God wait until they cry. Why? Why? Because he is enjoying that. Ah, okay, you are in trouble. Why? Why God is not helping ahead of time? Why God is not healing my mother and father before they die? Why God answered too late? The God never removed the problem in front of us. He knows that we will be afraid. Instead, He eliminates the problem. He's trying to teach us how to rely on the God. Can you read this? Yes. You hold peace in me because I'm going to fight for you. When we cannot have a peace, He's demanding us to have a peace. There's another one. The people of Israel, they left the Egypt for one month. They have no more food. They have no water. Their flocks are dying in desert. Well, they already experienced the God. They try to be patient one day today. But now, they cannot serve by anymore. So now, children of Israel complain again against the Moses and Aaron and God. Why you don't give the food? I'm going to die in this desert. 
better we serve to the Egypt. Remember, why God is not helping them in advance? Me? Before run out of rice in my house, I always buy rice ahead of time. Even one sub, two sub, I try to buy ahead of time. Why? Because I don't like to see my people in hunger and worry about the rice. But my Lord is not like that. He's keep on trying to teach us how to rely on Him. So Peter is just saying this, and we must read it together. Can you read it? Sometimes we are thinking about God. He is the one who is going to solve the problem, no. But what we learn from our life, we always have the problem. And God always allows the problem, which I really hate all the time. He let me have the problem. <clears throat> and through that problem, He wants us to grow spiritually and to learn how to rely on Him. If this is the, my limit to bear with, He always put my limit up to here so that I become cry in front of Him. And just to say that, Lord, I'm over. My limit of patience is over. You help me now or I will die. Yesterday I prayed that way. Last night, because of pain that I had, it's too much. Because I was thinking, I tried to serve him with my truth. But he's still not solving the problem. And instead, he's a saying that, Job, you know, what I want from you, you think. And you talk to me, and you see what I say. Well, we can have a problem with because of money, with an illness. Or, sometimes we pray in front of the matter of live or die. Well, what is the advice from the Bible how we can handle those suffering? The first, we must not lose peace of our mind. What do God say? I will fight for you. You have peace in our heart. Even if physically stability and peace are broken and everything seems to be shaken, we must not lose the peace that God is with me. The peace of mind we receive from God's grace should never be broken. Why? The point is that we must protect the kingdom of heaven in our hearts where God controls my mind. If I lose control of my mind, if my peace in my heart is broken, then because of when the psychological peace is broken, it means that we can no longer endure hardship with faith. Without faith. We will die. So Satan try to always break the peace in our hearts. So Paul is a straight to speak about the peace that we need to keep. Can you read it together? And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, which also you call upon one by one and make faithful. Yes, God says that you don't handle your problem. Let the peace of God rule in your heart when we have a problem. Let Jesus fight for your problem 
And we should not lose our peace in our heart. The second way, when we are in problem, if we are, if we desire to live as a true Christian, and if we really want to be saved, we must never, never stop being with the words of God. David, he was always in the trouble. And he confessed in the Psalms like this. Can you read this? This is my comfort and my affection. For your word has given me my life. Yes, this is my comfort in my affliction. During my affliction and my trouble time, the word of God has given me the life. We sometimes say this, casting all your care upon him, or he cares for you. Well, what does it mean casting all our problem upon him? What does this mean? It means that I must believe in God. But you must understand this very fully and carefully. When I say that, I will cast out my problem to him. That meaning to say, when I confess this, in fact, a confession that I will follow to solve my problem according to God's method and his will. So we must be ready to obey the word of God if we like to follow his will and his method. When I try to solve the problem my own way, it is not leaving the problem to God. When we solve the problem according to God's method and will, we can learn many things through the experience from the problem given to us. But we always fail, isn't it? We always try to find the way I try to escape. Before I moved it, to this house, I moved to the other house. There was a problem. It was a, during the Corona time. It was a very hard. Mm -hmm. Well, this owner, the previous owner was saying, okay, you can move out. The new house says that, please come in. Actually, it was all settled, but problem is in the office. The savior office there at Summer Street. They're not approved. But I could move because all the security guard knows me. They will not stop me if I say I will move. But if I just move, I will become liar to the, to the office. That time I read the Bible a lot. And someday we should move, but we didn't move. Our worker came, but I didn't do anything. Why? Because I didn't, I didn't want to break the words of God. I wanted to follow what he exactly said. And there's a news that Monday, for one week, the office will close because someone become positive in Corona. So meaning to say, I become nowhere to go. So I just pray. I didn't worry. I didn't lose the peace of mind. And she, the reason is trying to, to set up those things, and she called me. Boss, everything was solved. I said, how? The owner spoke, owner spoke to the office with the phone. So it was solved. We can move tomorrow. So it was just after one day, we solved the problem. And we were able to move to the other house. But I'm sure about this. When we are in suffering, when our heart is full of pain, maybe the words cannot come into our hearts. Well, the Bible says this way. Can you read it? This is my comfort and my affliction, for your word has given me life. When we have a suffering, the thing we must do and we must not stop, we must still read the Bible. 
And David is the same this way. This is my comfort in my affliction. For your words has given me a life. And this is the way he was able to solve his problem. And next, it says like this. Can you read it? <laughs> yes. He's saying that I kept your law so that I will not be perished during I have a suffering. What does it mean? The David was the person who never tried to solve the problem with his own willing. You remember the scene, this scene? When King Saul came into the cave to have you know, something to out. The David could kill the king power, but David followed the law of God. And he didn't kill, but he just cut his clothes. And when King Saul is getting far away, the David is, a, is you know, shouting, Lord, my Lord, I, was, I had a chance to kill you, but I didn't kill you. Actually, he had many times the chance to kill the king power, but he didn't do it. Because he followed the law of God. Because he didn't try to solve the problem with his own way, but the method and the will of God. That is the reason why King, king David is the great king we call. Well, the reason we must not forget to read the Bible while we have a suffering. I give you one video. This is the video, very short video. The baby will come out and the baby will see the mother. But when the mother is not smiling at her, the baby will not pass. But when the baby see the mother is in full of happiness, the baby can pass some problem. Okay, you see this? It's in Korean, but when you see the face, then you will understand. She's observing her mother. Her mother, her mother never smiled. But she tried to get to the mother. But there is something on her. She's afraid. But mother never smiled.
if we cannot see the desired face of the God through the words of God, we cannot get through the problem. Because in the Bible, God is smiling at us. He's just saying that I'm waiting for you. And we can see his tears. And we can see his heart. Only when we read the Bible, we can see it. That is the reason why we should not stop reading the Bible when we have a problem. Corinthians is uh, giving me the comfort. The word is so beautiful. God and the Father. Bless the God and the Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Who comforts us in all our tribulations. When we see his face through the word. When we see the comfort from the Father. We able to pass the problem as the children did. Why God still allow us to have a problem? He says the same chapter in other verse like this. Yes, we had a sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God. This is the reason why God allow us to have the problem. I also have many problems. I know that you also have many problems. But I have a problem not because he want me to in trouble and see that I am crying, but he want me to learn how I don't trust myself, but only in God. The Paul, he was an apostle. <clears throat> apostle, he says like this, our trouble which came in to us in Asia, Asia is Ephesus. Here, they had a really big problem in Ephesus. That we were burdened beyond measure. He don't know how the burden is. Because that is too much. Above strength. He already out of his own control. So that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves. In other words, even apostle. Even he was the first line to speak about the Jesus. His life was not really beautiful. We don't want to have a problem. But even in the Bible, all the people in the Bible, they are the people who had a problem same as you and I. God never eliminates our problem. The Jesus is speaking. Lord, my Father, if it is possible, let this come pass from me. But, did God remove his problem? No. But we must focus on the action what Jesus did here. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 to 9, it says like this. Can we read it together? Yes. Even Jesus, he had a suffering. He learned through that offering how to obey to the Father. He prayed before the night, before the day of the crucifixion. And through that prayer, through this prayer, he got the power.
to overcome the problem because God never eliminates the problem in front of us, but through our prayer, He gives power so that we can overcome our problem. So when we have problems, we have to remember these three things. First, don't lose our peace of mind. Let God control our heart. We need to get closer to the word every day. Because when we read the word of God, we can see his face, smiling face. And we can get over to him. And we can overcome the problem. And we must strive to pray. The prayer will stand us. The prayer, while we have a prayer, it will keep to us. This personal relationship is a very necessary for you and I. Because we are now facing the last two days. And we are supposed to know how to handle all the problem in front of us. I hope you and I will not lose our life because of our problem. Because we can handle the problem with Jesus. Let's pray. Amen. Amen.